Okay. Oh, I see the red. Ah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm going to present myself and then present you. So, uh, hi. I am Maider, the woman behind Luma Suite Handmade Cases. That's how I first knew Manka Dornik, a bright and so nice <laughs> Slovenian accordionist and performer based in Helsinki. In the week of the Women's Day, we thought to do something different from the typical post. So we decided to open a friendly debate about women musicians. Um, that's why Cecilia Darmstrong is here too. She's a, a full-time Finnish comp composer who has been studying in many places in Europe. So um, he, uh, she has also attended gender studies at Helsinki University. So here we are. If you want to add something more, you can do, so do it now. <laughs> um, first, uh, I am going to ask you a simple question, like how are you and how is the musician situation now in Finland with this? with this strange uh, epoch we are living how can can you say now how, how is the situation in general for well musicians? it mm -hmm. it was yesterday we had one minute of silence in memory of how the culture sector has been suffering mm -hmm. it's been now one year since they prohibited events with over 500 people mm -hmm. and at the moment it's a maximum of six people events so Maximum of six people. Yeah, so it's really hard for the whole culture sector and they say like it's interesting that the culture sector because there are so many people kind of acting on small private levels so it's quite hard to unite the culture sector but uh, they said that for example the restaurant business in Finland mm -hmm. is about uh, gives work to 90,000 people and it's about 5.3 billion euro uh, that goes through it but the culture sector gives work to 140,000 people and it's 12.7 billion euros mm. that goes through it so it's a really really big sector actually that is really big crisis at the moment mm -hmm. and the music industry has lost about 200 million euros at least in the past year and we got state funding of 15 million so that's about seven and a half percent of what has been lost has just been compensated. So it's been really, really hard for the culture sector this one year. Mm -hmm. However, I see like from the point of uh, like coming like from Slovenia and I see like Finland, how um, how the culture is maybe even somehow more respected or like that it has very significant part of culture. And I see like, for example, that uh, the the different institutes, et cetera, et cetera, are really trying to find ways and support musicians. Mm -hmm. Also very fond of organizing different ways to reach the people or whatsoever, things like this. So in mm -hmm. that domain, I would say like that Finland has really like taught also in this way. Of course, like it's hard for everybody and, but I see the difference, for example, compared to Slovenia, mm -hmm. that it's really more somehow the culture is has quite big significance and people know this. It's really so. Mm -hmm. And it's true that Finland has found many ways of uh, streaming concerts. So that has been in a very, very, very nice to see concerts from like Lapland Chamber Orchestra and mm -hmm. all around Finland that before has been like you had to travel, but now you can see them all yes. at home. Manga was telling me that previously um, that maybe now uh, six, uh, 600 people were looking the concert of, uh, of her, why in normal circumstances it may be 40 people, so it's like a big, very big difference. So, it's, yeah, yeah. Hmm. it's also nice, for example, like, of course, it feels like a bit weird like also from composer sites if you have premiere <laughs> to basically have musicians play to camera and if you are like on the stage and you play to these cameras and microphones but at the end like you need to think like people who would listen to you would come to your concert of course now it's somehow more accessible uh -huh. it's hard when you don't get a applause at the end or things like this um, a little bit it's awkward but 
you just need to believe in your music what you are doing mm. and yeah it's mm -hmm. it's quite nicely because sometimes like people as cecilia said you would need to travel somewhere mm -hmm. and now it's more accessible like to everywhere so it has own pluses and minuses this weird digital <laughs> about the accessibility uh, i think maybe that like musicians live in a in a bubble some so, somehow to to say to speak that do you think that um, female musicians live in one bubble and male musicians live in other bubble or also i have a question like it is different to be a female player or a female composer composer or is the same no difference because it's like only related to music world and it's it's nearly the same or maybe not what do you what do you think of course it's very hard when we everybody experiences the world usually from one perspective except if you change that gender but that is mm -hmm. not so maybe still not so common but so you have only seen the world from one perspective but I noticed like for example Sweden which much more takes in consideration um, gender issues and equality that I noticed when I moved there that I felt much more accepted and my suggestions were much more listened to and mm -hmm. it was I noticed that it was like like very different way of living for me there than mm -hmm. in Finland and then it made and often other countries so that made me think that oh maybe it's like I haven't had bad opinions maybe it's just been that I have been kind of yeah that my opinions haven't been listened to because of my gender so it started to, in a way it was a bit like a relief because I felt like it's not mm -hmm. personal it's about structure about culture oh and structural oh. sort of mm -hmm. sexism structural yeah that people I think it's very much about bias that we are not conscious about it mm -hmm. and that I don't think that in Finland we have at least that we are really trying to strive for gender equality mm -hmm. but I think there's a very much unconscious bias that you sort of it's much more common to listen to a man's opinion than to a woman's opinion and mm -hmm. when a woman has a strong opinion she usually has to say like I think this is my opinion and if nobody's offended I would like to do like this instead of yes. you have to be more apologetic yes because uh, otherwise you are considered like bossy no? like exactly. bossy person is like yeah i am not i am not the the, the witch <laughs> I am only a, a person, yes. mm. yeah and i always thought i am a very bossy person uh, i thought i'm a very sort of yeah i thought i was bossy and then in sweden i noticed maybe i'm not bossy maybe the problem uh, is that i'm a woman <laughs> who has opinions uh, and uh, yeah. what was the first time you felt that also to manga if there is um one moment you, you realize when when was it when you were uh 20 years old or something nearer in time I what, when yeah was it? i see for example this mainly on daily basis actually like it's very easily like you can see as cecilia said those like Maybe like, even though it's like said, like women's opinion matters, etc. as musician, but like you can still see, for example, for me, it was like, maybe from being small, like, you know, accordion, uh -huh. it was like, oh, you're a girl, how can you play accordion? Like very, very stupid, simple thing, but like things like this. And then also when you have so strong opinion or things like this, you can get this like vibes that like, whoa, like you are really a bossy person and things like this. So. I don't know like there have been things like this and also thinking like music like being like as a history uh thinking history how many females were there or how many weren't like even like accessible or known to mm -hmm. nowadays or even in music history we haven't been taught about them for example especially composers like and i feel like whoa just because they were women they yes. didn't even have a chance because they lived in certain period of time for example, like this is quite hard to understand. And even nowadays I see like among some colleagues, like like they still perceive me, oh, like you are still a woman, like, no, but I have quite strong opinions. So they will need to survive it. <laughs> I remember I have had like several sort of revealances. In 2014, I moved to Sweden. So I was like 26. That's time, mm -hmm. I first time noticed 
maybe it's not me being bossy, maybe it's the society that mm -hmm. views me. I like that in Sweden, I felt like much more accepted, as I said. And the second time was in 2016, when I started reading gender studies at Helsinki uh -huh. University. And it felt like I finally started to get names for things. It was like, oh, this is what is happening. It's like a common phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And 2017, there were two big experiences, like Me Too was, of course, a very big experience. Yes. That, that it changed a lot, I feel, the field. But it was also for me in 2017, I remember I heard at the fe festival Kokonainen in Finland that focuses on female composers. They were playing the piano part at, of Helvi Leiviska, a Finnish composer who writes in sort of romantic style. Mm -hmm. And I had always thought, you know, that women have not become famous because they haven't had the opportunity to compose and that's why they haven't had time to de develop as a composer and that's why their music is not played. So I was thinking like it's because of quality that we don't play female composers. And then when I heard this piece, it's like such a fantastic piece for me. It's like something like a Finnish Tchaikovsky, really wonderful mm -hmm. music. And I was crying because it was so beautiful music. And I was also crying because I noticed I have believed myself in the structure that, oh, it's because of quality that we don't play female composers. Mm -hmm. And I have been part of this sort of belief and believed it myself that it is because of the quality. And then I here get proof that no, it's not quality. It's just mm -hmm. because nobody has bothered to play mm -hmm. Helvi Leiviska. She has just become forgotten because there's no real reason. Yeah. And like, just thinking about those, like, thinking like or just like historical it's quite sad actually when you start to think about those things like and when you see like if something happens to you like you can think like okay like now we are here in this century maybe like we can still have a more word but then you think what well, back then in the history no word basically and it's it's quite sad to think about those things but yeah speaking about the historical facts I made a research and, and discovered that tr traditionally women played piano because they could stay at home and men were um, wind musicians because they went they went outside and played with the band and it's like it's a shocking thing for me I didn't know that that thing is the, 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 the thinking of staying at home and going outside that it was traditionally for men or for women no? like and and I have been thinking also if there is one instrument for women now are an other instrument for men or there is not that distinction there are there accessible for two genders or or not what, what do you think I when I um, when I speak with accordionists they are very much men. This is like a, a, a rare flower to be a manka because it's like a, a golden woman. It's, it's very, very yeah. good. But also, a professors of accordionist professors are in a very big number men so in high levels professors. Like, I don't yeah. know. Maybe they, or, or is that in the accordion world and not in the piano, for example, or is like the same thing? What, what is, is your opinion or your living experience about that? I, I can say only from my experience. Like mm, yes, of course. Of when, course. I was, when I was small, we were just maybe two girls who entered like the, this accordion class. And it was always, except when coming to Finland, before Finland, it was always like mostly men, etc., etc. I don't know, maybe like like on the first ball, I would say like what I got when I was small. Oh, but accordion is so heavy instrument. It's um, like, it's not for a girl. Like this kind of stereotypes, which are super dumb. Even my mom, for example, she uh -huh. said, oh, but why did you choose accordion? Like, why not flute? <laughs> and I said, I love it. Like, yeah. it's just, and I love it every day. Uh -huh. Like, I'm not regretting my choice. being But um Maybe those things like, oh, this is like not girly instrument, like it's heavy, 15 kilos, things like this, mm -hmm. like are kind of like somehow very stupidly like yes. narrowing. So maybe it started from there, like thinking like what are now teachers on high 
maybe mm. like high uh, levels from the yeah, so, as you said yes. maybe because of the history also because also mm -hmm. our instrument it's not that old actually in the end like what mm -hmm. we have nowadays so yeah i think in order to be in this history or in this development or whatever i think mm. you need to be a strong woman <laughs> to go through obstacles which society brings etc etc mm -hmm. but for example here in accordion class in finland there are quite many females uh -huh. I, I must really admit which is very nice very nice to see and hopefully also after Isn't some it years about half and half mancha mm, i think it's a bit more females right now not half half but i would mm -hmm. say three three fourths of females Mm -hmm. some, some also players. in high level education or like starting playing uh, i'm speaking about high level education ah, okay uh, then starting playing it's maybe half half yes but i have seen that because in the early ages it is the same always but i see i school. see yeah i see yes. for example like festivals or like uh, ensembles like professional uh -huh. ensembles there is no female accordionist like it's very very like interesting to see like i don't know that maybe is, that that has been like the general like what you were might have talking about uh talking about that there are a lot of stereotypes that high-pitched instruments are for women mm -hmm. low-pitched instruments are for men so like cello is more male dominated violins flute is more for, uh, women uh -huh. uh, guitar which is a sort of like more like masculine and big instrument yes. is also uh, much more men and everything that it has more physicality about it is it was considered for more for men mm -hmm. but also everything that has more with a sort of leader position so conducting and also composition because mm -hmm. in a way as a composer you have to have the such a strong idea that you believe that like a whole orchestra of 100 people will mm -hmm. do your idea so yes. there's also in a way a sort of aspect of leadership but it's interesting uh, this about high positions but for, because for example just like you said my uh, mm -hmm. that most of the, even though there would be a, a sort of half and half still in studying, it mm -hmm. always ends up that who gets the high positions. So that's what we are not, I think nowadays we are trying to question that why, how can it be that men always are more competent? Is that mm -hmm. really the question or is there some bias that we have? That for example, there has been a research in Stanford about um, applying for a work in a laboratory, so not music, and uh -huh. they sent in the same application as a woman and as a male. They just changed like their name and a photo. And generally the whole jury, both women and men ranked the men like 20% more able and 20% more sort of capable for doing this work and suggested a better salary for them. So uh -huh. it was sort of when uh, women get a eight, men get a 10. Uh, so uh -huh. it's, it's sort of, very structural in our head this sort of unconscious thinking which i think makes that there so it's interesting also when you look at for example the orchestra programs that i think it was like about between 60 and 80 percent of the soloists are male mm -hmm. and 96 percent of the conductors are male and 96 percent of the composers are male so these are things that i think you have to really be conscious about if you want to change Yes, I have read now that in all the world, the registered music composers, uh, women are only the 20% in all the world, 20%. That's so very it's like actually. very little. And yeah, also, if, also for, uh, um, also not only classical music, it's like uh, all composers, uh, like yeah. um, for music, soundtracks, uh, everything. But I think, yeah, that's already, but that's already going in a way to a better direction. Well, I think it's strange that we have, like you said, 20% women already mm -hmm. existing, but then we still just play 4% composers mm -hmm. that are performed are women. So it's like, what happens? Why can't we at least have them like that we perform 20% mm -hmm. of music by females that there would already be like, like five times more <laughs> than what we have at the moment. So that would be already a big it's change. Mm. It's true, it's true. Um, I, I was also thinking, um, 
because I follow a lot of violinists in the in the media and um, because that is true that they say that there are a lot of women violinists <laughs> and and maybe I see that there is also uh, like hypersexualization or I don't know the name in English but like you have to be pretty and smiling all the time and like it's so, so good and that I don't know uh, there is a, um, also a, a case in, in cello with two people that are the two cellos that are also hypersexualized and they are men and it is like the same thing and they are very very famous but I don't know if uh, this is like a new thing also in classical music or do that are professionals and see a lot of musicians do you think that it is uh, some trend also in we women to differentiate now or how, how do you see that? Or do you think, ah, my, it is not important. You are very <laughs> looking things I think that very is, deeply. That, that is very from country to country, I think. Ah, from country that, to country. Ah. I think that in Nordic countries, maybe it's not quite so much this. Ah. Yes, in the Mediterranean, we are very, very like that. Like that yes. Also in Italy, mm -hmm. Spain. I think like people are definitely like also visual <laughs> like mm. they like to use visual and of course like it's sometimes like if you get judged for this mm. who are, how do you look or i don't know things like this or oh maybe you are too fat to be or like i don't know like very things like this like of course everybody has own insecurities but huh. per se if you get like uh how do you say like picked criticized or, or... or criticized or I don't know, like, or mm. if you, if I don't know, I think some pianists are wearing quite short skirts and etc. Yeah, and yes, I have seen also that. Uh, yeah. I mean, for me personally, it's just like, okay, that's who they are. Like, I don't have anything against it. Mm -hmm. But if that's they who they are, then it's fine. But yeah. I do agree. I agree with Maida that I feel that there is kind of a pressure on women that you have mm -hmm. to look good maybe not hypersexual, but you have to be pretty. You have to sort of yes. have hmm. at least uh, like a pretty uh, dress and clothes and hair yeah. and makeup. Yeah, so. that's of course, for sure, like makeup, hair, dress. I mean, it's it has been since quite long <laughs> years maybe, but yeah, at the end, like for me personally, it's like, okay, if that's who they want to be, that's just who they want to be. But like, of course, it's there, those like, kind of standards already like how female should be like female should have makeup yes i i like agree this. and that's linked to what was uh, saying cecilia that what is the structural and what is what do, do you want no oh. the difference the slightly yeah. difference uh, what is people doing right now to be different and to be heard and to be considered professionals and what is what they want no I, I, mm -hmm. um, and i i and I am seeing this tendency now, but, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe it is, it is not something only for women. I understand that it's like one, one thing that, that it is uh, um, I, one thing for, for two, so for, for people in general, maybe. Mm. Hmm. I at least heard from one pianist who is like a, a soloist. Mm -hmm. And this woman said that uh, when she was pregnant the first time, like around five, six, seven years ago, it was like an issue that her agent said, don't let uh, conductors see that you're pregnant, uh -huh. that this is really bad for your career. And it was like, at that time at least, for sort of a high level soloist, uh, yes. pianist, professional, like considered uh, like, oh, so you chose like a family so you don't take this profession seriously so it was sort of question while no man who gets children is questioned like oh so you don't take your profession seriously mm. uh, at least i haven't heard of that yeah. and so it's like for women sort of much more expected that it's either or and uh in a way you can like never win like if you choose family it's like oh you don't really invest in your career and if you choose career like oh you're such a harsh person who doesn't want yes. the family <laughs> so it's like yeah. a lose-lose situation nowadays it's, i feel for women yes. yeah it's so much judgment actually like because like for example like 
I mean, you cannot like choose probably between, of course you can choose between music and career, but like if you get judged, whatever you choose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just because of your sex, it's a bit like... <laughs> Really? Yes, Not I nice. think you touch a very, really hard point because it's been for ages the, the women problem in the work, in the job, in any job. Yes. Because mm -hmm. uh, if, if you have a child, maybe you have to spend one year adapting the situation and you come before, or after one year to any enterprise or people are, aren't you looking seriously and I understand that I think that is the main problem the the the, the education the family and conciliation and I was yeah. thinking for making the interview to to uh, also to have one solution in mind <laughs> and I am not sure but I uh, I, I propose maybe I, I don't know but to have share share things between a, a couple, for example, and not vacation of one month, but like a short time vacation or something that you can come easily, not not having to wait for one year, maybe. I don't know if I am. Because yeah. the, the, to think about that one solution is, for me, is very difficult. Also for the culture that you were that you were um, seeing that the Mediterranean people think one thing, the, the one, uh, one person in Finland is living differently, a German family is different also, but I don't know. But that's also, one, like, problem. one suggestion has also been that also dads have to stay at home, so yes. that this sort of parental leave becomes like obligatory for both parents, that would make sort of it not such a minus for women to stay home as children because men would also stay home as children yes. and plus it would be really good for children in general to have a close bond to both parents yeah i have noticed like for example like i mean it was always a bit like i see also in whatever other actually profession in music of course it's even more obvious like orchestras like usually like the employees like think of oh, females it comes more problems mm. Just because, I mean, at some point, of course, like when you will go towards 40, mm. maybe towards 40, like 30, 40, yes. it might, it might come a time where you might have to like, or might have to, or have a wish to have a child and there is nothing you can do. And like, but if you are em employed or not taken just because of this, it's like, it's really not, mm. not fine. Yeah, it's not really not equal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think more, it is not human, because yeah. women don't have child, there is no more humanity yeah. <laughs> in, one, in 100 years. So Very well said. We have to think the human perspective, I, I think that is the human perspective. Um, I, I have a last question that I, it came to my mind yesterday, like, if you are a very famous musician or composer, it is the same to be a woman or a man, isn't it? Or not? If you are a very super famous, like, I don't know. I think you're always much more judged as a woman. Yes. Also a super famous, like, whatever you do will be much more sort of looked upon very exactly, like, and criticized. And uh, yeah, I think you're much easier sort of become criticized. Because you are like an easy target, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, hmm. and I think it's like not conscious, but I think, I don't know why, from women it's always expected that they are, should be perfect hmm. <laughs> the whole time and everything that they do that isn't perfect is criticized while men are it's like, oh, but they're human. Hmm. <laughs> so women are not expected to be human. Hmm. It's true. Um, yeah, it's really so that like also a lot is expected from you like maybe even like once you are quite successful in whatever you do in playing or composing like they know like okay that's your name and you have kind of pressure to be there and do this and like it can be quite hard those things and feelings and yeah i mean then you have always like also some man who will judge you or like who mm. might be like another women hard. also <laughs> yeah. also another women it shouldn't be so <laughs> it really shouldn't be so but like 
Mm. People have different characters, personalities, and there is nothing you can do <laughs> but just no. accept. And yeah. absolutely, like Maider said, like of course we women also have these biases mm. and are also part of this that we have to change our set of thinking mm -hmm. about other women and. Yeah, it's really a big part that we, everybody in this society, mm -hmm. like I said, this Stanford, uh, this example that I had about, so also the women judges, judge women 20% less capable than the men. So it's mm -hmm. really, all of us are, have to change our way of thinking for this society to change. And to finish, uh, what do you, what do you think that could be the first step towards a good direction? For, for musicians, composers, the industry of, of music in general? What will be the, the first, like the, the first baby step or that, that, could be, that could be done? To uh, like, not, not a solution, but something that, I don't know, like a solution. <laughs> I feel it doesn't like, I mean, of course, like firstly, everybody must be aware of this. Uh -huh. And if people who are 60 years old, things like this, or mm -hmm. general uh, managers or agencies, or I don't mm -hmm. know, like intendants of orchestra are not aware of these problems or like those things, then nothing can really change. So firstly, everybody needs to be aware of it. And then without judgments, which is sometimes very hard to be like in music, you get judged all the time, let's be honest, mm -hmm. but to not have judge and really not to be like, Okay, just because she's a woman, she's mm. an accordionist, she's a composer, like just because of this, it's not simple reason enough. So I think it starts from all the people. Uh, so education, uh, educating other older people, do you think, or making like programs, teaching programs, or? I think personally that you have to sort of even put in some sort of code, or maybe not 50-50 at the moment, but I think it's important to include like for example 10 percent or 20 percent mm. female composers trying the soloist department make it 50 50 because there is for sure yes. <laughs> availability also in conductor try to make it at least as much female uh, conductors as there is available also give them the work so i think it's like you have to be conscious because because it's so easy that we go always the way we have done it before we have always played the same composers over and over again uh -huh. And for making a change, we have to make that change. <laughs> really have to think, what can we play instead of these same composers over and over again? Yes, I agree. And that is also funny. Like, it's an easy, easy thing to, easy way to start, no? Like, funny yeah. thing, uh, different, experimenting, no? I, I, I think, I think it's, it's okay. Uh, and also, music can be a very, a very, um, interesting way to to change the society no? I, I think starting with music with arts and and, and also something that you can enjoy it's, it's, it's funny it's, I think it's... yeah it's I mean like it's so expressing like huh. thinking arts are generally expressing something like feelings whatever like society reflection or like mm -hmm. thinking like compositions can be based on this. So I think like also to be aware of those, what, this what's happening and if it can be set somehow through the arts mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe people will try to more and more understand. I, I really don't know any other. And I, I, I believe also like, because art is supposed to be kind of beyond sort of profit and everything else so art is yes. very important i think that it's something that makes us human like there's some yes. part of culture so for art it's very important to show also the way in things like mm. equality between not only between men and women but also between different people exactly. and exactly. also other things so generally equality and it's something that remains for future generations so exactly always remains so it's i think it, it can be something yes so thank you very much for the meeting uh thank we you, have Maida. two minutes left so you. if Less you have something to like <laughs> thank you very much for 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 joining 
this half an hour and I, I am very grateful. And th this is also a, a good thing that the, these times, these straight times ha has helped us to do like connecting people very far, but very, very near also. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Maider, for mm. having us. Thank you very much for coming, Cecilia, and joining mm. also for hosting, Maider. Yes. A very big hug. <laughs> <laughs> okay.